part. Um, I'm going to be going over Monday. I'm going to be going over Tuesday because we have a um, change where the sun's going to be going into Aries. I'm going to be talking about Thursday and then also talking about um, Friday because Friday we're actually having Mars moving into Pisces. So it's like just some days throughout the week to kind of like know what the energy is, but also like some days where things are actually like ingressing into new energies is going to be like pivotal too. So focusing on those things. But yeah, I'm going to do all of those. And then I am going to do a reading. A, a pick a card. So I'm still deciding on what topic to do. I kind of like it being open to where you guys can choose. Um, you know, what the topic is, you know, what's most interesting to you guys so that I can do that too. And you guys can have that. But yeah. So. Let's get started. The first thing we're going over is Monday's chart. Now. Um, we are getting closer and closer to the eclipse. The eclipse is not happening next week, but the following week. So we're probably already starting to feel pretty antsy. Um... We are probably like feeling a lot of tension, feeling a lot of tension building up and not really quite sure, especially if like you don't really know what's going on in the Astros. Like one way I like to look at it is like, you know, there's the weather we deal with on Earth that are like weather people are always telling us like percentages about things could be wrong, things could be crazy and stuff like that. But the way I like to look at astrology is more of like a the weather that's happening like outside of us but it still affects us because we're a part of like the big weather so it's almost like why we can see these huge moves and shifts but it's like a percentage because it's like there's still a percent like how there can be a percent of rain there's still this percent that things can go really wonky and go the other way because there's such a huge spectrum to things so it's kind of good to look at but i wouldn't say like there's a healthy balance that I feel that a lot of people in the astro community don't talk about where it's like some people become a little too, it's like they put too much of every action that they do based off of astrology when your chart is, especially it's okay, your natal chart is supposed to be like a default energy you just kind of carry around with you that you can either like grew up really bad or you can like max its potential it's your choice it's just it's there transit going around us when it hits those points in our charts it's gonna make us light up and like be interested in that like area of our chart so it's like if you have stuff there natally it's like giving you the chance whether it's through tension or whether it's through like opportunities to actually grow into the better form of your default if you fight it, then obviously you don't. You either stay default or get worse. You see examples of that everywhere. <clears throat> now, the reason I'm saying all of this is because that's the kind of energy we're in right now where a lot of um, things we could be doing for ourselves because we have Chiron and Aries and it's going to be playing a huge factor next week because it's conjunct the eclipse and um so as the north node mercury will be too it's actually going to be conjunct both eclipses they're they're just doing the most right now so there's like this huge massive like pull to like this wound where we all personally feel victimized because it's it's Aries, it's us personally. Like I I am hurt <laughs> because Aries is I am. So it's like this collective feeling that we all personally are wounded and no one understands us. <laughs> and uh it, it can become very blamey. It can become where if people are not making mature decisions um or at least trying to have a more mature point of view when it comes to like their emotions and how they deal with their emotions and their struggles or at least being accountable 
uh, we're going to be seeing um, a whole lot of fighting because that's the more, um, how can I put this? It's like the instinctual side of Ares is fighting because they're the warrior. So instead of working, like when someone is really wounded in this energy and they haven't been working <laughs> on the things that are happening around them or to them, inside them, all the things, if you've been just shoving it down and not really doing anything with it, it's going to come to a boil link point where some people are just going to be very nasty. Now, if this is you yourself, don't just be like, well, if I'm screwed, I'm screwed. Do Please do something. Like, this Aries energy can be used for so much good, but the reason I'm pointing out this downside of it is I feel like there's like a lot of astrologers right now that are trying to make people feel better. Because this energy is kind of sucky, I'm not going to lie. Like, they're trying to make people feel better about the things that they can do, but they're not being honest about the more brutal things that you can be dealing with right now. Because even, like, you have to, like, be honest with yourself. Even if you are doing the work, that doesn't mean the next person is. And it can really make you angry and bring up a lot of wounds that you thought you worked on when you're just dealing with someone that refuses to do all the hard work you did and is just throwing things in your face over and over again. And it's like, they don't see your side on top of refusing to do work to get to where they could see your side. So it's just like this lose-lose. Now... What I do want to say is that even though we are in this, this energy right now, collectively, like it might seem like very personal energy, but it's collectively, we're feeling this personally. Everyone's, if you're not looking at things more objectively, which is what Pluto is doing. Pluto is trying to help us bring control to our lives by learning objectivity while it's in Aquarius, because that's like... That is the strength of Aquarius, is literally their objectivity, for better or worse, because they can also be so objective that it actually pulls them out of themselves and it doesn't allow them to actually experience their experiences because they become the person that's always observing them instead of like actively living them. So it can, it can be a, a dual-edged sword, just like everyone else here with their spectrum of things. So... What Pluto is trying to come in and do with all of this me, me, me energy, because we're getting more and more of it because the sun's going to be moving in the Aries too. It's like we're getting, and plus the eclipse is going to be like Aries, Libra axis. So having all of this, it, it's trying to show us, yes, we're feeling very, very me right now. And even if you're usually a very giving person, you might be feeling more like, about yourself than usual and not really sure where it's coming from this this is where it's coming from and we're going to be in this for a while like if you think that you're getting away from this like this is actually going to be sitting in aries for a few years like both we're just going to be dealing with it so if you're actively like becoming a bigger baby by the day it's it's not going to get better unless you turn around and start doing something about it because that's the thing about aries energy also and also taking your power back with this pluto energy and being objective you have to see where you can do something. You have to see where you can actually have the control over the things that you can actually change. Because, like, there's certain things you can do personally that can better your life day to day, but you're just making the excuse not to do it because it's inconvenient. Like, that's a you thing. Like, if you're just stuck in a very, like, screwed up predicament at the moment, it's like, that's where you need to know where you just need to let go of certain things. That's the Pisces energy that we've been in, where it's like we're making boundaries, where we were too codependent, and we're also, like, learning where we've had these rose-colored glasses on, or we've been delusional over certain things especially when it comes to parts of our ego that like protect us from being hurt and just like want to feel safe. Um, those things kind of coming out and lashing out and like wanting to feel this like loving balm because you know, we have Venus and Pisces right now. So that's exalted energy. It's like this like overflowing, like unconditional, like loving energy. And it's like, people want to feel that 
right now and if you're not feeling it right now you could be feeling kind of scorned about it you could be feeling like it's a personal attack if someone's bringing it up around you because you're not experiencing that and the hard truth of that is that's a you problem it's literally a you problem and there's like no way around that if you are getting angry at other people's happiness there is something poor in you not with them even if they're ha even if you want to sit there and be like their happiness is fake whatever it is if happiness regardless of how you see it triggers you you need to like pull back and see like why are you so against happiness like do you feel like it's something that you can't attain do you feel like it's something that it's like the life you were born into just made it to where you're just not able to reach in your lifetime it's like there's some kind of limiting belief you have on yourself around the level of happiness that you're ever going to achieve if you're angry at seeing someone else's level of happiness no matter where it comes from whether it's real fake or whatever it's like if someone else's life is doing something and it has nothing to do with you it's not harming you in any way and they're just you know even if they are faking things it should be no bother to you because that's their life they can live things however they feel they need to to get through their life but if you have this like this feeling of like just wanting to talk all this toxicity about it then that means that's how you feel about your own happiness and that's some deep work that's literally the kind of work you need to be doing right now in this energy if someone's good emotion no matter what that emotion is whether it's like being proud of something they've accomplished whatever it is um finally getting help like i swear therapy is being thrown around so harshly right now and it's like some people are really using it to be mean to other people and it's it's just kind of nasty but um people and it's because people are upset that other people are finally like getting ahead in their lives they're finally like making changes that are good for them that are healthy for them they're finally taking care of themselves because what comes with someone taking care of themselves that never used to take care of themselves boundaries that's what happens and that's what saturn and pisces is it's like there's this feeling of like yes i want all this love in my life but not at the expense of my health and some people are learning where certain relationships especially with this eclipse coming up guys it's since it's on the aries libra axis it deals directly with relationships your relationship to yourself with aries and your relationship to others with libra it is the relationship axis so whether the relationship with yourself sucks and that's going to be getting a huge reboot whether it's like through yourself or outside things happening to you depending on your chart or if there's going to be certain relationships that you're letting go of or putting up bigger boundaries with and whatever it is because you need your space and they're not how can i put this it's almost like there's a huge energy of like respect with this if someone feels disrespected with this like aries energy boundaries will go up now i'm not saying all of them are going to be healthy boundaries because i feel some people are gonna blow some things out of proportion and it's gonna be kind of nasty i mean especially like you know monday's chart right here this in the evening and like mercury sitting right on the north node um like exact degree like they're just sitting on top of each other in the evening this is like this can be two things always the spectrum figure out where you are on it and if you want to get to the other side of it do the work to get there is what i'm saying so one spectrum is you're talking about your goals you're talking about these things you're excited to do these things that probably could change your life forever and you're having these like conversations about what you're passionate about you're maybe even making new plans or you're taking new action towards something though i wouldn't recommend that too much um starting completely new things right now because though this energy can feel this way things are about to get mucky really quick we're about to be going into where mercury is going to be retrograde next week we're going to be going into like i said not next week but the following week the eclipses it's like this energy is like 
a lightning bolt. So if you want to work with a lightning bolt, work with a lightning bolt. Some people work great with lightning bolts. Other people work better with like steady energy and like knowing what they can count on and things like that. Some people love the electric freaking zapping of everything changing in their life at once to each their own. But that's what you're working with with this. But it's completely fine to talk about these things. It's completely fine to like take these actions where you're changing things in your life and with yourself and your like own self-talk to be more aligned with these things. So when everything moves more forward come like May and when, you know, Mercury is not retrograde anymore, it'll be like this breath of fresh air where you can move through things and finally start like making progress. Because the thing is, if you start something now and Mercury goes retrograde, there's going to be all these things that either you're going back and looking at that's wrong with it, that you're like not really sure about, you know, doubting yourself, all these different, like all kinds of stuff is going to come up. So the best thing to do is kind of like vision board your stuff right now and maybe see where, especially with Chiron here, maybe see where you might have like any wounding or like any kind of limiting beliefs around like what you deserve and like, what you feel comfortable going after. Now, we also have Aquarius is still in, um, not Aquarius, Mars is still in Aquarius. <laughs> That'll be changing later this week. But Mars in Aquarius is squaring Uranus. Now, I talked a lot about, hello, I talked a lot about, um, I talked a lot about like Mars squaring um, Uranus last week and how it can make a lot of unpredictable things happen because this energy, like Mars is our like movement. It's our way that um, we like act on things, our motivation, the things that we get like passionate and fiery about. It's also our anger and things like that. So our energy levels. So when that's squaring and causing like these challenges and tension going to Uranus, which is all this like unpredictability, it, it just, you know, messes things up to mess things up for the heck of it. Um, this is Monday's um, energy on this graph. So what can happen here, especially with Taurus and Aquarius energy, there can be something you know, Taurus is money. There could be something that you're not being as objective about as you think you are when it comes to money. <laughs> you might be thinking it's a good expense, but maybe it's not. Because this energy, you have to realize, um, it can give this surge of um, vitality just as much as it can give a surge of aggression. So like this surge of, I want what I want and I want it at this moment, like that impatience and having like that unpredictability of Uranus thrown in there can mean you might make some brash decisions and just decide like, you know better. Have a good night. But um, what this can end up doing also, if you're not careful, is it can, um, cause Aquarius has a lot to do with, um, groups of people. This could also be like, say you have friend groups, depending, it can, like, you have to have to look at your chart for this stuff, but it can bring out this energy of like putting your money and resources into groups of people that aren't really good for you. And that cause a lot of challenges in different areas of your life, the areas of your life where this is going to come up is going to be where these energies are, like wherever you have Taurus and Aquarius, you might see yourself putting money into these areas and like taking it from one area. Like say um, it's in your seventh and your um, 11th kind of energy, right? What can happen is you're taking money either from the time you would spend with your friends to put it into like your relationship or like your business, like relationships, your romantic, whatever. But it's like, you're either taking it from that area or you're taking it from your relationship, like things you would do to like build your relationship. And this doesn't have to be money. This is like your resources. This is things like your time. This is like you giving like your self-worth to certain things because you could give your self-worth 
to certain groups of people and it'd be very unhealthy for you and it could put you in very unpredictable situations where it's like i wouldn't normally be doing this but i'm really swayed by this group of people that you could see that kind of energy right now especially if you see like resources being withheld because it can be that kind of thing too where um it's almost like a group is withholding resources and people are feeling left out and angry about it so there could be some of that floating around right now too but what we all have to realize with this to work with this is using like the key points and using it to change the challenge into something that works for us. If we know that we're feeling really strapped when it comes to resources and like our time, if we're feeling devalued in certain relationships, this would be a good time, even though it'd be tough, that tension, that square, it would be tough to assert the boundaries. You know, this Saturn thing we're trying to learn where we have these codependent relationships where we assert our boundaries and say where we're hurt by what is being done so that like we're taking action towards the problem but we're trying to communicate now if you don't feel you are the kind of person that would be able to communicate about this right now instead say that you need space so that you can work through these heavier feelings because the one thing you don't want to do especially since the moon is going to be in cancer throughout monday the one thing you really don't want to do is react emotionally and let those words fly out the instant that it happens, like the instant you feel it. That's what you don't want. Because with the moon in Cancer, like, that's its home. Like, the moon's at home in Cancer. It's happy. But at the same time, it's squaring off with Mercury and Aries which means that we could really be feeling our emotions. They really could be exactly what we're feeling, but it's also sextiling Uranus and Jupiter, which even though that can be seen as a good thing, we can have too much of a good thing. We can have too much of a new emotion that we're not used to. And then instead of being able to like understand it, we end up just blah, like word vomit. On people that we care about because we're feeling like personally attacked by the new emotions that we're feeling even though it might not have anything to do with them so that's just something to watch out for we have a lot helping this moon on monday we have a lot helping it there's a lot of things that are trining it trying to like make it feel good as it's going through there but it's just watch your mouth is literally the only thing because it's almost like the squares that we're seeing Monday is more like an emotional reaction you don't expect yourself to have to something. And you're given the chance to decide how you allow that emotion to come out of you towards whatever incited the emotion. Now, if you're alone in feeling this, be nice to yourself. Just, you know, have a self-care day if you're going to be alone on Monday and just like take care of yourself take it easy but if you are gonna have to be around people if you're planning on an important thing happening on Monday if like you were planning to have a talk about something that's really important on Monday if you can feel yourself heating up or if you know whoever you're talking to is not someone that's really great with their temper it might be better to reschedule it honestly um because this is like the right wrong thing is said <laughs> But at the same time, if you know that who you're dealing with is, is typically really good with their anger and it's more of like, this would be a really good day for walking through and like hashing things out that have like either been bothering you or bothering someone else for a while and be able to actually make progress where you felt like very blocked for a bit. Because this, this Aries energy, it's like it's coming to the forefront right now where more and more things are just moving over there and like that energy wants us to do new things it wants us to put our vitality into trying new things into starting new projects into starting new relations it's like that kind of energy wants new things Taurus wants to ground the new things, which is all this Jupiter and Uranus energy now Uranus isn't too grounding which is why Taurus isn't happy to have it sitting there 
but this energy just creates um where our resources don't really necessarily ever feel like they're really secure which is kind of like the air we're living in right now globally where it's like our our resources actually secure is everything okay like there's kind of like that thing hanging over everyone's head right now like even the person that doesn't know a lot about what's going on everywhere it can still have this tension of like am i safe um and that can also add into the fear that we can fear with the emotions with this aries energy squaring the moon throughout monday where we're just feeling this fear of like what about me am i safe in like all this thing and if this might be you like actually voicing your fears to someone and it being reciprocated and like you know certain things are talked out and new things are made um new structures are created in different relationships for the security you know that kind of thing that's not like a positive way of looking at this is like being able to work through that but this isn't the kind of energy where you're gonna work through something with someone who's been toxic to you for a very long time and you know they're toxic they're not going to mystically not be toxic that's one thing i want to say like when i talk about people like working through things these are not people that are have actively for like a long period of your life just been horrible to you those people are not just going to mystically become better people with transits that takes work and if you haven't been seeing them like doing the work and actively like trying to get better and like all the ways that you know you've been trying to win more when they're the abusive people then that means that they're not going to change just because a planet goes into another sign it's not going to happen that's wishful thinking that's one of the ways i feel that people need to definitely not try to use astrology is hoping that like something that's bad is mystically just going to be better with astrology more than likely if you are in something bad and certain transits happen what's going to happen is they're going to keep showing you just how bad the situation is and keep trying to show you ways to get out of the situation until you take it yeah and see that's one thing that you have to watch out for like toxic knows they're being toxic most of the time so they're not going to change unless there's an incentive to change and that incentive usually isn't for the betterment of your life so that, that's just something to keep in mind here and like anyone can be toxic like you can be born to a toxic parent you can get into a toxic friendship multiple to what, toxic friend groups are like a huge thing um toxic like romantic partners it's like there's just this long list of like it doesn't just take like a boyfriend and girlfriend for something to be toxic and i feel like a lot of people need to start realizing that because it's like there's all this like pitting against each other when in reality what we need to be looking at is like how do you deal with toxic people not how do you grew with, how do you deal with a subclass of people that have like one person <laughs> that's part of the abusive community it's like you th that's not how it works <laughs> it's like that's just how you like create is i feel like that's a big issue too is like everyone is so separate right now that no one's tackling issues everyone's just making more and more and more and more issues and that's the thing with this aries energy is because it's so like me 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 with like you know my wounds what I want to do is like that's a very like disjointed energy to be dealing with like the fact that you know you're hurting you're in pain all your wounds are like you're having to deal with them they're in your face and but at the same time all your goals all the things you want to go after like being scared of your future is in your face so it's like the past and the future are just like being shoved in your face and on top of that your mind is going a million miles a minute because it's in Aries and Aries is like super fast all these new ideas and you're not really reaching any conclusions which can be the really annoying part with Mercury and Aries because it's a bunch of starting energy so it's almost like it starts a bunch of ideas and you need to have other things to tether the ideas down or you're just going to keep floating with more and more and more and more ideas 
and it can become very frustrating it can like that's another thing feeding into the moon it can cause a lot of like emotional overload if all you're getting is a bunch of new 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 and like nothing feels like it's stabilizing that's what we need to use the the taurus energy for it, it's what it's there for like aquarius can help us a little bit because it's fixed energy but the most it's really going to help us do is be a little more objective in our stance instead of just throwing all of our emotions into everything. It's like being a little more um, aware of what's going on and like how we can observe it instead of like full on throwing ourselves into it the instant it happens because that's how we're going to have problems. <clears throat> so this is for Monday. We're going to go into 